If everyone's ready, we're going to start back. We're going to pick up where we left off and. Um, hopefully everyone can see the screen again. We're going to look at. Another way to use the shading. Um, sometimes instead of the shading. <clears throat> in particular. We use numbers. To identify the regions. So, for example, if we had set A and set B, we would have region one, two, three, and four. This region in A, the region two is where A and B overlap. The region three is in B and four is outside of either A or B. And that's in the universal set. Now the order of those numbers does not matter. They could be in any order. They don't have to specifically be in those particular orders. And then you might have a question that says, find A intersect B. What region represents A intersect B? So if we were looking for A intersect B, that would be region two. So you only have to indicate what region represents that answer. If we were looking at for A union B, there might be more than one answer. So the regions that represent that is one, two, and three. So you would give all the regions that would represent that answer. If we looked at A prime intersect B, <clears throat> we did that problem earlier in our notes. So if we went back and looked at that problem, we see that that represents this area that's only the B part. So that region is just the three. So sometimes even though it's marked off with regions, we may have to go through and complete the shading to figure out what the answer is, but then our result is only giving the solution of what represented that region. So that's how we would approach that kind of problem. Let's look at a problem with three sets. So if we had Universal set. Set A. Set B. And set C. And we were numbered the regions.
Again, how they're numbered and where they're numbered is not necessarily important. That can change. If we wanted to find the answer to A intersect B intersect C, we might have to look at that problem separately. A intersect B represents this middle part. And then that intersecting with C represents that little area. We had done that problem earlier. So that middle region represents the region of five for that result. <clears throat> All right, suppose we want to find A prime intersect C intersect B. So A prime would be outside of A. C would be inside of C. So that intersection would just be this part with C. B would be this region. And so where that intersection intersects with B, Gives us just this area. Did I shade too much again? I believe I did. It is not this area. Just that region. And so that would be region seven. If we want to find C union A intersect B, what region or regions would represent that?
So we have region C. Union with A, so all of this together. Intersect with B. So here's B. So the intersection part. Are those areas? Which gives us here, here, and here, which is four, five, and seven. Why don't you folks try this one? Let's see what you come up with. Find A, union B, intersect B prime. I'll give you a couple of minutes. See what you come up with. Everybody got an answer? If you look at A, we would have this area and A. If we looked at B, we would have this area in B. 
to union, we would combine those two regions together. For B complement, <clears throat> that would be the regions outside of B. And so the union intersecting with B complement would give us this region. which means our answer would be regions one and six. Everybody get that? Now I wanted to show you one more problem with parentheses because sometimes the parentheses in a problem add another kink to it that sometimes students have trouble with. So if we want to find A intersect parentheses C complement union B. Just like order of operations, you do what's in parentheses first. So all the parentheses are telling us is to do what's in parentheses first. So instead of starting left to right, we do what's in parentheses first as we do our problem. And that might change the outcome just a little bit. So C complement means everything outside of C. Union with B. So all of that is combined together. So everything that's been marked up is combined together to represent what's in parentheses. And now I want to look at A, which is this region. And I want to see where does A intersect with what was <clears throat> shaded prior to that. Where does A intersect prior to that? So it intersects in this region. It intersects this region. It intersects this region. So what would we call 
those numbered areas. That would be one. Four. And five, wouldn't it? Do I have anybody here? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay, just checking. Yes, All right, now I'd like to show you and finish up class with some application problems. One way is to just to organize information. So we're going to look at how Venn diagrams can help us organize information. So we have all this information. We're looking at blood types. There are eight different types of bloods when we look at A, B, and O, positive and negative. We should end up with eight different types of blood. So we have A blood, B blood, and O blood. When we talk about the RH factor, that makes our blood be positive or negative. Usually when the RH factor is with O, it makes the blood be positive. So our diagram is going to be about blood types. And that's what the universal set would be, is the blood types. We're going to have three circles. But we're going to have type A blood. We're going to have type B blood. But we're going to look at the RH factor versus the O factor. When the RH is positive, that gives us our O being positive. Now, where A and B overlap, that gives us AB blood, and we have AB blood here. This is still considered A blood, and this is still considered B blood, but it's it is joined with 
the RH factor and it's joined with the RH factor of being positive. So that means B blood is positive. This A blood is positive. This AB blood is positive. So if it's not inside that RH positive set, then what is it? That means it's a negative factor. And so the O, which has all of it, is negative factor outside of there. And so that is just a diagram using the Venn diagram components to organize the information about blood types. So that's one example of how a Venn diagram can be used to organize some information. In math, however, we don't usually just organize it. We use it to problem solve. So we have a school. that has 800 students. To take the SAT test. It had. 500 students. Take the ACT test. And 200 students. To take both. And we want to find out how many took each. So we're going to use the Venn diagram to help us. So this is our school for the universal set. With this information, what we know is the overlapping part. That's what we know for sure. 200 students took both. We have the SAT test and we have the ACT test. 200 students took both. We don't really know how many took just the SATs, and we don't really know how many took the ACTs. But can we figure it out? Yes, we can. If 800 took the SATs, we take 800 minus the 200 that also took the ACTs, and that leaves us with 600. So that's how we figure out how many took just the SATs. We do the same thing for the ACTs. 
500 minus the 200 leaves us with 300. So to answer our problem, 600 took the SATs and 300 took the ACTs. How many took each? So that's using the Venn diagram for problem solving. That's an example of using it to problem solve. Any questions on that problem? There's going to be variations of that, that you may know this number and this number, and you have to use it to help figure out that, or you may know a total in the school, and you have to use that information to help you figure out a missing component. But there's different ways that you might have to set up that Venn diagram in order to help you figure out parts of it. Okay, our last problem. We have a travel agency. Our travel agency has 125 customers. Sixty eight of these customers. Went to Hawaii. Fifty three of these customers. Are traveling to Las Vegas. Forty seven of these customers. Are traveling to Disney World. Thirty four customers. Go to Las Vegas. And Hawaii. Twenty six customers go to Las Vegas. And Disney World. We have 23 that go to Hawaii and Disney World. Helps if I can spell.
18 went to all three destinations. So we have question one. We want to know how many went only to Hawaii. How many went only to Hawaii and Las Vegas? And how many didn't travel to these locations? So we start with our Venn diagram. Universal set is the travel agency. One circle represents the designation Hawaii. One represents Disney World. And one represents Las Vegas. The question is, where do you start with all that information? And you want to start at the bottom. What do all of them have in common? All of them have in common that 18 went to all three of them. So 18 goes in the middle. That's the starting point. And you're going to work your way out from there. So you kind of are working backwards from the information, the way the, the data was given to you. You're working your way up. So you're going to have to do some calculations as you go. So if we move to the next item, Hawaii and Disney World. There are 23 that go to Hawaii and Disney World. But 18 of them have already traveled. So you have to take 23 minus that 18 to find the number that goes in this part. So that gives you five. And so that's how you figure out what goes in that section. Ms. Burns. Sir. Um, I was just trying to get back in. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. If we look at the next step, we're looking at Las Vegas and Hawaii. So that is um, 
26. So we have to do 26 minus the 18 to figure out what goes in there. Las Vegas and Disney World. I'm sorry, wrong place. 26 minus 18 goes here. So that's going to give us eight. And this is 34 minus 18, which is gonna give us 16 for that part. Next one up is 47 in Disney World. So we have to take 5 plus 18 plus 8 and subtract it from that 47. And that's how we figure out how many goes in there. That should give us the 16. So these calculations do not actually go in the Venn diagram. I'm only showing you what you do to figure out the numbers to put in the Venn diagram. So I'm not trying to do this to confuse you. I'm just trying to show you how do you figure out the numbers that go in the correct spots. The next step for 53, that's for Las Vegas. So we have to add up the eight and the 18 and the 16, and then subtract it from 53 to tell us we get 11. And last, we have the number to Hawaii is 68. So we have to add up the 5 and the 18 and the 16 and subtract that from 68. We should be getting 29 there. So one last number we have to look at. And that's your total customers. So we have to add all the numbers up in the circles and subtract it from the 125. So you have to take everything in the circles. and add them up and subtract it from 125, and you should find that there are 22 people left that did not go anywhere to, or to those three places. And once we get the Venn diagram filled out, then we can go back and look at our questions. How many went only to Hawaii? So these folks went to Hawaii but also went to Disney World, also went to Las Vegas. So the number that only went to Hawaii was 29. How many customers only traveled to Hawaii and Las Vegas? Well, if we looked at this number, they went to Disney World as well as Hawaii and Las Vegas. So the number that only went to Hawaii and Las Vegas 
would be 16. How many didn't travel to any of those three places was the 22. So we use the information to fill out the Venn diagram. And then from that, we're able to answer the questions. So we have to take the data first, start where they are together in the center and work your way out to get your data filled in. And then once you get your Venn diagram filled out with your values, then you can answer your questions. So that's the last problem we're going over. We've used up our time. Sorry to keep you over. I just want to quickly again remind you You'll get an assignment tonight that covers lesson one. You'll be getting a quiz one that reviews that topic. Tomorrow you'll be getting an assignment for lesson two, and then you'll be getting a quiz for lesson two. By Sunday, you'll be getting an assignment for lesson three, and then having a quiz for lesson three. On Tuesday, we will be reviewing sets, and having a test on Wednesday. So check Brightspace. I will be posting notes, posting videos from classes if you've missed something so that you can go back and get that information. There will be PowerPoints that goes over the information we've covered as well. Any questions? All right, see ya. Email me if you have questions.